bands and picks. So we're going to send it over to LD and Lumi for game number one of the grand finals of the Alienware Cup. 25,000 on the line for first place, 12,000 for second. We all hope you enjoy the show and best of luck to both teams. LD and Lumi, take it away. Welcome to the draft, ladies and gentlemen. It's game one of a best of five, your Alienware Cup Ooh. grand finals. First place, 25,000 and a whole lot of swag. Second place, 12,000, not too shabby. A bit more because some teams were penalized prize money. But that's neither here nor there. Game one, the draft underway. LGD China, we saw how much they loved the Visage. I mentioned how important it is to them. They'll get it here. And I heard Bruno groaning a bit because we will see a Dragonite for Navi. But it could be a Havos Dragonite. If it's a Dendi solo mid Dragonite, uh, I would tend to give the edge to LGD. Well, they won their game yesterday with Dendi on the Dragonite that's mid. True. He went so well in terms of farming. He beat the Puck in the 1v1 matchup, which you should never expect a Dragonite to do. He got a ton of mid game item, including a Shadow Blade BKB, and just walk up to the towers late game and just sieged it. So I wouldn't count Dendi out particularly. I think Xiao A is one of the best solo mids in China and definitely will give Dendi a run for his money. It depends on the hero matchup though. I really feel if Xiao A has a big hero advantage, I think Xiao A can beat Dendi mid. If they have similar heroes, I think Dendi's the better laner, yes. but Xiao Eight for him, his really what makes him a good mid is his movement. So right. and can he find an early gank? I think Xiao Eight excels in more of his mid game fight and not particularly his laning. So I yeah. will give Dendi the edge here. But Dragon Knight's not a strong mid, so we'll see how. There's it goes. only so much you can out lane somebody on Dragon Knight. You yes. can last hit well. You can breathe fire at the right times. Get a couple creeps. You're probably not killing your opponent. That's not the goal of a Dragon Knight mid. And like we mentioned, it could still be a Havos safe lane Dragon Knight. They have run that before. It's a possibility. I, the one thing I really like for Navi is that they've taken the Dark Seer. So mm -hmm. they, they do get that. I thought they would go for an early Chen. I mentioned how junglers are really the best way to deal with Visage. First of all, you're not running a tri lane, so Visage can't necessarily get that 3v3 you know, explosive snowball start. Secondly, he can't do anything against Chen creeps. You can put a lot of pressure on the lane early, delays level 6, and that's why we see LGD China ban the Chen, ban the Enchantress, also just puppy signatures in general, so they'll remove that from the equation. Uh, but I was a little surprised Navi didn't opt for the Chen or the Enchantress with that first two picks. I mean, if you want to avoid the Visage, you just need Darkseer in the jungle, which is, you know, he could get quick farm. And I really actually like Darkseer starting in the jungle for Navi here, simply because it's very easy to pop that jungle, give Dragonite Iron Shell, surge him, and suddenly Dragonite transform into a, like a, actually a very powerful killing hero, depending on who he's actually facing against. If it's not Pug, if it's not Queen of Pain, you're probably getting a kill with that kind of combo. It's, it's like an Aghanim's Beastmaster, and it's just in terms of the closing distance right, right, and the right. range at which he can initiate. It reminds well. me of how Dignitas runs Darkseer and Templar Assassin on the mid lane. Very yeah. similar in terms of damage output, in terms of how quickly you get kills, and we'll see what Navi actually pulls that trigger on that. Of course, LGD Gaming gonna open with Visage, excuse me, open with Gyrocopter, Navi and if they pick up a Naga Siren here, for example, they could even go offensive trialing. We've definitely seen a lot of Chinese and Southern East Asian team run that in the Alien World Cup. Not sure whether you want to do that against Navi, who is really good at controlling early game aggression, but LGD Gaming have some cards up their sleeves as well. We'll see how it goes. They will ban out the Magnus and the Windrunner. I think the big thing with these two bans is these are heroes that can stop pushes. Mm -hmm. So a lot of AoE from these two. Very hard to go high ground against Shackle Shot against RP. That's the biggest threat these two bring to the table. Windrunner, obviously a strong laner. Mag, obviously something LGD China have been running. But to me, looks like Navi might want to go for some sort of early to mid game push right now. Darkseer can build your mech. Dragon Knight can be the frontline hero. We'll see what kind of heroes they go for from here. They won't have access to the Chen. We've seen Puppy turn to the Enigma quite a bit. Uh, in certain yeah. situations, especially when they want a five-man in the mid-game. We'll have to see if they go for it now. Uh, for the time being, the draft slows down a bit. Both teams kind of eyeing what's left in the pool, thinking through their next few steps. Bit of a chess match here for both of the captains, Director 8 as well as Captain Puppy. Yeah, I think the ban out on both Windrunner and on the Magnus actually targets Yao quite well. I think he both for the... He plays both of them as a hero. Of course, Xiao Wei also plays a Magnus. At the same right, I think Nature's Prophet should be a hero that LG is looking for. It doesn't give them too much early game, but Wrath of Nature is so good at split pushing late. And I think split pushing is one of the best way to beat Navi. Navi, once they get far, far enough ahead, they'd like to just go down one lane and try to end it by yeah. taking racks. If you hold that push and split push, you get yourself back in the game. Remember yesterday, it was a Phantom Lancer, and they held for 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. but the Phantom Lancer held by standing in the base. So they didn't die but they never got out of that hole, if that makes sense. You need a split push against Navi to get yourself out of the hole. And that's why I believe Nature's Prophet or any other split pushing carry is the way to go against Navi. And we'll see what LGD picks. There's a Puck in the pool. There's a Queen of Pain in the pool. There's a Templar Assassin in the pool. Particularly those last two can dominate a Dragonite mid. Xiao8 has a pretty good TA. 
I think his Queen of Pain's a bit stronger. He's not really known for those heroes, but he can play a, a very suitable one when the case presents itself. If they expect a Dragon Knight mid, I feel that's what they should go for here. Slow down Dendi early. Don't let him get that fast BKB Shadow Blade. They'll go for a Nyx Assassin. So they have a not really a one big team fight here, but just a lot of lockdown, a lot of burst damage in the team fights. A little bit lacking in terms of counter push. Navi now selecting the Rubik for a Kuroki. Uh, we'll see if Navi really wants to push early. These last two picks are going to tell us a lot. Yeah, don't be surprised if Nyx Assassin actually goes mid here for LGD China. Not many other Chinese team run him on the mid lane anymore, but particularly in this case, Mana Burn is going to take away Dragon Knight's kind of spamming ability in the lane. Um, and it's a melee hero, so it's a fairly okay matchup for Nyx Assassin. You want to level up Mana Burn in this particular game because both Darkseer and Dragonite are very dependent like, with their Mana Pool during team fights. So if you get off multiple Mana Pools in a single team fight, especially against Dragonite and Darkseer, you do quite well. So we'll see if Director 8 takes this mid. He generally does it, but we'll have to wait and see. Jakaro's going to get a selection here by Navi. I think Puppy's going to play this particular hero. And his general philosophy on playing Jakiro is that he likes to roam around between the mid as well as the, his, his safe lane and just provide a ton of support, make sure that both, his, both of those lanes that he's in is winning. As a result, he stays like level 1 and level 2 throughout like the first 5-6 minutes of the game. But what he gets you know, out of it is his solo mid as well as his bot lane. Both get farmed, both get the advantage. Navi have the Vacuum Ice Path combo, mm -hmm. and they are one of the teams that's better, uh, one of the best teams, I would say, at executing that combo. If you nail that Vacuum right as an Ice Path comes, and you drop a Macro Pie over the top, you can instantly just, the enemy team just scatters to the winds. It's, they get basically busted out, and they can't fight anymore. So it's a potent combo for Navi. A, a lot of AoE here, they don't really have the most mobile lineup, and uh, it's a lineup that wants to group up in the mid-game to some extent, and I feel they'll need to because they're up against the Nyx Assassin, they're up against Familiars. LGD have quite long reach already. You mentioned a Nature's Prophet as a possibility for them. The only issue I see with that is if they get a Nature's Prophet right now, it, it could be a mid-Nyx, but it looks like it might be a solo Prophet. And Prophet versus Darkseer, that's a matchup that Funic would just basically, yeah. he'd, he'd get those big eyes, right? Like, oh man, give me that. I, I will show you what happens when you put me 1v1 against a Prophet. I mean, Prophet is kind of weak in most 1v1 matchup, but I think he's somewhat deceptively weak. Uh, Trin is actually pretty good here, as Ooh. Kunkka is going to get Kunkka, so, maybe. So never mind, scratch the idea about Nyx Assassin on the solo mid. It's going to be Kunkka on the solo mid position. And look at the amount of lockdown this team provides and the amount of burst damage. You have Bolt, you have Call Down, Rockets, Impale, Mana Burn, of course Kunkka, Tybering, of course Visage, Soul Assumption, everything on top. You do have some fairly tanky heroes on the side of Na'Vi, but that's enough burst damage to actually just stun Darkseid once and get him bursted down before even casting any of his spells. And that's one of the best way to actually beat uh, Darkseid teams. And it looks like Navi is going to ban on Nature's Prophet. Yeah, X Torrent is going to be a potent way. You can try and surge someone to safety, they get pulled right back in. Mm -hmm. It could be a solo mid Nyx and a tri lane Kunkka, depending on this last pick. It could be a solo mid Kunkka. Uh, LGD have a lot of options with how they want to lane this. They could even abandon the off lane if they want, but when you have a Visage, a Kunkka, and even a Nyx, these are all strong, even a Gyro, all four of these heroes are strong in the aggressive tri lane. We'll have to see if LGD want to force the issue there. Right. Um, I think I remember one team actually picked Enigma on the off lane. I think it was King J uh, playing from to for Tong Fu. Mm -hmm. I don't think LG Gaming will resort to that as they ban out Naga Siren themselves, so maybe wow, they're looking to take some kind of aggressive team fights. Well, obviously that sleep, set up your vacuum, and the sleep, vacuum immediately, then ice path, very potent combo. Right. Could catch LGD off guard. Also, uh, just an annoying hero to play against in the laning stage. If you want to go aggressive Charlie, Naga's Riptide makes tower diving very dangerous. The minus armor really adds up. They'll go for a Luna, kind of a taste of LGD in here in some ways. The early mech buyer in the darks here. The early five man carry in the Luna. The strong frontline tank pushing mid in the Dragon Knight. And now for Navi, the lane seem pretty clear. Solo darks here, probably in the off lane. Dragon Knight mid for Dendi. Uh, of course, the Darkseer for Funic, and then a Tri lane, Havost Luna, Puppy Jakiro, and Kuroki Rubik. So their lanes seem very set. My big question is do LGD try to want to get aggressive here? They could run a safe lane gyro against Darkseer. Actually, does reasonably well in the matchup. Very dangerous to dive gyro without creep support. Aggressive tri lane, Nyx Visage plus one, Kunkka mid, or a Nyx mid, and then a Kunkka Visage plus one. LGD definitely have their options if they want to go aggressive. I'm not sure whether they need to go aggressive in lane. I think they have the opportunity to do so. If you look at these lanes, they're generally very passive. Dragon Eye stays back and farm. Luna does have some offensive capability through a single target nuke, but for the most part, she wants to stay back and farm as well. Same thing with Darkseer. 
if you look at the mid game for Navi, once they get their BKB, what is LG Gaming gonna do? Sure, they have some call down that's gonna call slow. down. <laughs> yeah, you slow them. And Pop you, the boat and run. And run, right? Th that's your only option. So once BKB gets active on Dragonite and Luna, that's when Navi is the strongest, and they're gonna push. So I think that Clockwork and the rest of LG China needs to make something happen before the BKB comes online, get themselves a little bit ahead, and that's difficult for LGD because they generally don't win the early game. Interesting. Yeah, Clockwork here looks like they might just send him solo off lane, but we'll introduce our teams now. Welcome inside the game. It's game one of a best of five. LGD China on the dire side, your winner bracket champions for the Alienware Cup. They now need to win three in a row to take down Na'Vi, who battled back through the lower bracket through IG. They went through them all to get here. On the dire side, it'll be Yao, the clockwork, heading to the offlane. Looks like he's on his lonesome for the time being. DDC, your Visage, Observer Wards picked up, heading towards mid. Director 8, Xiao 8, rushing the bottle, pull tangos on the Kunkka. DD, safe lane support Nyx with sentries picked up. And last but not least, Silar, one of the best carries in the world, playing that gyrocopter. Meanwhile, on Navi side, Funix is going to be playing your offlane Darkster. May start in the jungle, may not. We'll have to wait and see. Dragonite is going to be handled by Dendi. It goes into mid lane. Kuroki, of course, playing his probably the best European uh, Rubik possible. We're going to have Puppy handling the Jakiro. Look towards his early game roam. And last but not least, we have Havos 4. Maybe the 4-roll Luna? I don't think so, but he's playing the Luna in a safe lane, at least this game. <laughs> I think someone told him about the Hexagons, Lumi. Oh, I see. I get it now. <laughs> I'm not sure, but yeah. we'll have to see how the lanes develop. Havost, as Bruno mentioned, he is one of the premier balls-to-the-wall carry players in the scenes. Not many of those in China. Navi, they've traveled all the way from Ukraine, from Eastern Europe to be here. They went to, chi they went to China to come and to conquer. So far, they've conquered all the opposition. LGD, LGD China has been the one roadblock thus far. Let's get into the game now. The rune about to spawn. LGD camping the top rune. They'll get lucky a bit here. Illusion rune picked up off the bat. And they will be running an aggressive tri lane. So both teams looks like we'll see some early trades. Yep. And uh, well, here we go. Puppy's going to be not sending lane. Are, you, are they actually thinking about going all the way top and run a tri lane top? I don't think that's oh, going to oh, be Did successful. I say aggressive? I meant defensive. Are they looking for a first blood mid? Maybe they're surging somebody in for a kill? Oh. Not too sure what everybody. They, they must be here. a surge into a lift into an ice path. That's got to be the plan. Xiao Eight sitting very far back. Now it's a little suspicious. Is he going to react in time? Well, they want to come in, but it looks like this is going to be a hard one. Funix still waiting. Yeah, this this gank just doesn't work because when you send on your own hill, you see across the hill and they. Just Are they expecting a level one gank on Dendi? Maybe. Maybe, but everybody else showed themselves in the lane. DDC's peaked out on the top. So. If you want to go for the first blood, you don't take Ion Shell. So very, very, very odd, I would say, but. They'll park three heroes mid, and Kuroki going to be stacking some neutrals, so not really wasting too much time. Navi still being fairly efficient, despite camping four mid, but LGD China happy just to sit back and farm. Uh, so we can look at our lanes a bit more closely. Safe lane Gyro uncontested, safe lane Luna uncontested, and they'll go back in mid. They've smoked up three. Dendi tanking the creeps, baiting maybe a bit too much. So low that Xiao Wei, even Xiao Wei's got to be like, hmm, that's a little too much blood on the deck already. That's actually some next level bait. They show themselves in a, you know, semi Oh, they wrapped around. Gank. Kuroki goes for the lift. It's not going to connect. Navi a really pressing for this level one gank. Yeah, it's, it's like kind of weird. Like, they show themselves and they say, oh, you saw me. And then they go back and smoke up and try again. It didn't work, and that's a ton of time being wasted. At the same time, they did stack the high level camp on the left as well as in the main jungle, so Darkstar is going to find himself a ton of gold. You know what it is? Yeah. What? It's mind games. It didn't work Make out. Make Xiao A confident. Make them think you're idiots. Make them think you have no idea how to gank. Next time when you come, you'll execute it perfectly. Yeah, but look at the trade off here as we see LGD you China pressuring up top and Clock were getting a ton of experience. You just don't understand Puppy's mad genius. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't think LG it was China... A, it was a little bit of a strange <laughs> gang, but not a big deal. LG, like you said, put, putting some early pressure on this tower. Silar tanking way too many tower shots there, not removing the aggro well. In comes the Ice Path, already a Glyph forced out from the Radiant side. They're the lineup that wants to mid-game five-man, but for the time being, it's LGD putting the pressure on Puppy, a good defensive counter-pushing support, and... He'll get quite a few levels now. Yeah, very, very good ice path. What it actually did was not to stun it for 0 0.5 second, but draw the t creeps off the tower, and then he could farm it very safely. He's already at level 2, so he's matching up the farm on a, on a support that's been pulling on the other side of the map. Doing very well is Puppy. Back in the middle here, we do see Invis Dendi, or not Invis Dendi, Dendi coming in, not stunning just attack. yet. Could have done a lot more damage if he did, but he's going to just save his mana for now. Wouldn't have gotten the kill. Xiao Eight on the sitting on the full bottle, but could have harassed a bit more. Uh, so as far as our safe lane carries farm goes, Havos winning that battle so far, 16-3 and three to the 12-3 and three of Silar. And obviously, the main reason is they tried to push the tower early. In doing so, they actually gave away a lot of experience to Puppy, who hits level 3 as an offlane solo Jakiro. 
The only reason this happens is because LGD trying to saw a few mid. So you get off Xiao 8, we'll push top, but this is the downside. Navi getting a lot more experience out of that off lane than they really should be. Yeah, and of course now we see Kuroki going back to do a double stack pull camp. You generally don't get this pull off against the Clockwork because he could easily Rocket Flare and then just take her creeps. Yao looking to do that here. Unfortunately, he's not taking too much, at least not a Mud Golem. And in comes Yao, trying to contest that pull a bit. Level 4 for the time being. He's got access to Cogs, so Vost may be thinking about a Lucent Beam. These two by themselves probably cannot kill him. They'll need a plus one if they really want to do it. The Courier parked mid for the time being. Denny probably looking to do some bottle crowing soon. And back into the jungle, Navi will go. Very passive play for them thus far. But you know, Navi, it's only a question of when they get aggressive, not if. I mean, these heroes are fairly passive, right? Dragonite doesn't do much. Luna doesn't do much early on. But you can, like you said, get, get a little bit aggressive, especially Darkstair comes out with the Iron Shell and Surge. Uh, you do see Jakira rotating to the top lane, checking for a rune. It is going to be on bottom instead. Ice Pass going to fly. Not going to do much. Two birds scouting each other out, neither looking what he sees. The rune will spawn bottom. It's an illusion rune. And Yao with boots might get here first, but he's going to run right into the entire enemy team in doing so. Uh oh, Luna is going to try to cut him off. There's one beam, but Yao could actually fight his way back with some battery oh. assault. Yeah, I think he actually could have gone for a kill there, but wasn't sure about the backup. Even with level 1 battery assault, It does do hurts. a ton of damage, especially to Luna, who is kind of frail in the frame. But That's understandable, you don't necessarily know where all their supports are. They did see Kuroki at the rune, but it would be a bit risky. Yao will play it safe. He'll opt for getting more experience. So overall, Lumi, we look at the trades here. Dragon Knight for Dendi, winning mid by a little bit. He's about 5 CS ahead. A decent lead for him. Safe lane farm going better for Havos. Navi getting more out of their jungle. I would say slightly less out of the off lane now, but only slightly. Who do you favor overall as far as the trades go? I think the fact that LGD is falling behind right now favors Navi. I talked about the importance of BKB. They're getting these farm unmolested. I know we're very far from BKB, but every little bit goal uh, and experience count. Puppy getting a ton of level is not what he's used to getting. So I think Navi, because of the level and go advantage, are slightly ahead, but we don't even have first blood yet, so maybe that's too early to even predict. Of course, for LGD, they have... We didn't get to talk too much about the end of their draft, but in going for the Clockwork and the Kunkka as their final two selections, they gave themselves a lot more AoE, a lot more team fight, and a lot more counter push. Tidebrainer, the Boat, the Torrent. Navi, obviously this lineup that wants to group in the mid game with BKBs, but not so, the supports won't have BKBs. That AoE is still going to kill the Creep Wave. They're not the easiest lineup to push into. To get those pushes, they'll really want to find a Surge uh, into a Dragon Tail, set up some kills, and then go for the push. And we'll just have to see how good LGD's defensive positioning is as to whether that will happen or not. Yeah, if you look at Xiaoi's skill build, already t t taking an early point into X marks the spot, wants to get aggressive, might not be surprising if you even take it at level 7 to get that uh, gonna guarantee X Torn combo. Torn's gonna fly out here and Really can't kill Dendi here, in this case, unless you... Well, here it goes. It's going to go the other way. Dragon Tail from range form. Ice Path to follow through, and they're going to try to burst him down. Xiao is going to use a bow and try to get some damage. Blocked out. Magic sticks up as well, and he's not going to survive as the flames of the two dragons pop him up. DD's going to get selected as well. DD's on the DD run. DD with a DD. He's, How cute. How I, clever, but he's gotten caught. Not cute and clever enough. Now the Dragon Tail will come through. He's going to go down. Two kills. Navi, they draw the first blood of the Alienware Cup Grand Finals. They now lead 2-0, to zero, six and a half minutes in, and that is exactly the kind of start that Navi wanted. Yeah, and exactly the start that they're used to having, especially not with uh, this kind of aggressive team. It looks like maybe they're going to try to get a return kill on the mid lane. They do have X as well as Torrent. Bolt is uh, on cooldown, so maybe not. Meanwhile, top tower is going to go down. Jarocop the last in. Looks like they're going to go on Puppy. Funny though, comes right in time. Yeah, they'll defend the tier 2, Navi, they'll stand strong here. Funic up to 850 gold, Shreds come out on Denny, so Navi's starting to get some basic items off of that successful team fight. Xiao8 wanting to be aggressive, I have to say, Dendi's done really well in this matchup. We've generally seen Kunkka actually beats Dragon Knight mid, because Tidebrinner ignores the Dragon Knight's high base armor, doesn't have a mana cost, and you can punish him if he goes to those runes and look to pick him off with a Torrent plus one allied support. But Puppy setting Dendi up for success, helping him to get the runes early, his supports Kuroki helping him bottom as well, and then just great movement from Puppy. They set up a first blood for Dendi, and now that he's level 6, it's a tough lane for Xiao8. Anytime the Dragon forms online, if Xiao Wei's in the river, he easily dies to Dendi plus one. Yeah, I mean Dendi, the fact that he's, or excuse me, Xiao, uh, Xiao Wei, the fact that he's actually got a point of X really lowered the fact that he could harass a lot more with Tybrinder. So that might be a reason why he's losing a mid, uh, mid lane a little bit. We're gonna see an engagement oh. on the mid lane X Torn. That's gonna fly out here, and Dendi's gonna get stunned. Another stun fly through. Here comes a bolt as well. Dendi out of Mandy. He runs away from the bolt and then back here. But here comes Yao. They are gonna get Dendi, but at what cost? Are they? Are and, they? Yeah, yes, they, they are. are. And no cost. As uh, well, maybe. Well, that was a bit. That was four, four. heroes yeah. mid. Navi bring three, but Funnick heads right back to the jungle. 
They kill Dendi, it's a very important kill because we saw what happens yesterday. He went 5-0 and 8 on Dragon Knight. If you don't slow down the Dragon Knight and he gets some early BKB and early Shadow Blade, there is just no stopping that hero. Yeah, was going to hook forward. He will get an Invis Rune. But that means hook on the sideline. So if Navi want to be aggressive, they know the hook's cooling down for a minute. The boat, well, it's not really, there's basically no cooldown with this yep. spell nowadays. Uh, but we'll see if they look to get aggressive. Havost, when it comes to farm, uh, actually slightly behind the gyro, simply, he's ahead in CS, but he's behind me because the tier one top did go to LGD. Still no grouping up from Navi. The big thing for them is the mech. That's what they really need before they try to take some aggressive fights. Funic sitting on 500 gold, 450, as well as a buckler. We could see a mech by around that 11, 12 minute mark at the latest. Yeah, Funding is actually farming very quickly, and that goes back to the two support pulling on the side of Navi at the very beginning of the game when they were camping mid and not doing too much. He's definitely benefited from that. He's going to get a ton of experience. Really want to hit like level 12 when you have most of your spell being maxed out. Really want that mech, and of course, that should all come in conjunction with those BKB, and Navi will go for a kind of a mid game superiority push. Very far away from that right now, and they're just. They're just very happy with the fact that their towers are mostly still alive, they're not losing too many kills, and that's all you could really ask for from a somewhat passive early game team from Na'Vi. I want to talk about the importance of BKBs this game, because the ports of them for Na'Vi, they are very important for LGD as well, particularly for Silar. Once he gets a BKB, Na'Vi have the right clicks of their team from the Luna, Lunar Blessing to try and bring him down, but that's it. And only Dragonite is really going to be right clicking, aside from the Luna. Mm -hmm. So it's basically two heroes auto-attacking. Gyro should be able to get off full flat cannon durations during the team fight, and that's a very potent deterrent to pushing. So I think if they don't stop Silar from getting a BKB, you're, uh, you get caught by a hook, the boat comes through. Na'Vi will just kind of be trapped there and unable to push in. I would like to see Na'Vi try and force some towers, try and prevent Siler from farming his BKB. We will see them start to group up his four and put a bit of pressure bottom. How aggressively will LGD look to defend this? Xiao Eight's parked behind the tower. Yao adjusted to the west side for the time being. They really don't want to give this tower up. Both solos at this lane means if Na'Vi commit to this, LGD are going to fight back. Oh, well, they could make the hook right now. They do. The call comes in. The torrent's going to fly. But then the Juke's still 11. Yao blown up. But here comes a big bad bow. Then in big trouble. The call is going to hit ready. Puppy, or no, Kuroki steals the boat, fires it back, and Hovosa is on the run. He gets canceled TP, and he is going to be dead. Surprised that he didn't drop the clips. It was dropped, and it didn't do much. Double kill goes to Silar, and a great defense coming from LG China. Even with the boats being stolen, Navi loses the fight, loses the true core, and LG China comes very far ahead. They committed to that push without the mech. Yes. That's, I wouldn't say it's a mistake, but that's very bold from Navi. I just, they didn't seem like... They expected LGD to defend so aggressively. Yao as well as Xiao Eight were there. You look at Navi's vision and they only have this one Observer Ward mid. They may not have known that Kunkka was there. Obviously you expect Clockwork to be there because that's his lane, but the early movement from Silar, absolutely crucial. Without him there, they maybe get one kill. With him there, they get both cores, the Luna and the Dragonite. The tier one bottom did go down to Havost, so they still get the tower gold. That's important. And they do up the mech now. Not a horrible trade for Navi, a tower and getting your mech gold and the two for one, but not really ideal by any means. Yeah, I mean, that, that team fight will put Silar close to that BKB, and you talked about how important it is. Of course, if you look at Visage, already at a buckler, working towards the uh, uh, the, the mech, and he's not nowhere got native farm. Meanwhile, back in the bot lane, it's going to be a lift into a Torrent Bolt. The hook comes in against DD. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Yao wanted to save his teammate. If that hook hits, he just might have done it, but the extra auto attack from the Twin Headed Dragon, Puppy secures the kill, and the hook not quite on the mark Top there. Top lane though, looks like Luna trying to go for a little bit of aggressive fight here. It's drums. Havos doing his best to draw a TP who didn't want to commit to a kill there. No way he would dive that, not without Eclipse, but unable to do it. Silar just a bit too durable. And the BKB, if he farms this before Navi take, I feel like Navi need to take the tier ones before he finishes this BKB. If they still have tier one standing, pushing into those is going to be extremely difficult. And LGD on the dire side have the roast advantage. You want to take those tier ones down. Now that you have your mech, the BKB for Havos, sure, he's working towards one, but he stopped off for drums. If they wait for his BKB, Silar's going to have his for sure, and I feel Silar's is probably a bit more important. Well, BKBs are not up right now, but Navi will try to pressure Tier 1 tower. They do have their mech right now. Here comes the Dragon Form. It's going to be a lot more difficult to win this fight simply through burst damage. Torn flies out, drawing the creep aggro uh, from the tower. Dendi, of course, if you look at him, popping in and out of that tower range. Getting that one hit off, as one hit does burn like 60 HP from the tower. It's pretty impressive in terms of damage output. Yeah, it's really annoying. Yeah. You watch helplessly. This is where you want a tree end, but no such luck here. Denny will come back in, plink away, plink away, just chipping, bobbing and weaving. No commitment yet. Kuroki Arcane boots up. 
He has stolen the ghost ship, by the way, so keep an eye on him. A big ghost ship could make the difference. That's a two-hero torrent. Now the Hulk comes through. It's caught of those two ghost ships crossing in the night. Whose will be better? Yao was clipped by one. Now the Eclipse comes out, but it's not doing enough damage. Dendi on the back foot. The mech keeps Navi in fighting shape. Oh, if they didn't have a mech, that would have been very bad. But that is the mech difference. With it, they get caught. They simply back off. They don't lose anyone. They did use Eclipse, however, which hurts them quite a bit. Without Eclipse, taking those team fights is very dangerous, so I imagine they'll have to play more defensively for the next two minutes. 9 out of 10 ultimate to use, no kill. Welcome to the grand final of the Alienware Cup. Chinese Both Dota. Teams. Well, I'm not exactly Chinese Dota. This is our <laughs> fairly aggressive fights, but everybody pl noticing uh, one to back up, especially Havol's dropping quite low. You talked about the importance of mech, but the fact that LGD defends their tier 1 tower against uh, Navi's aggression. Oh, this could be big. DD hunting Funic. Does he have any backup? Or even a rocket might be enough. The familiars were giving chase. They can't quite find the kill. Well, they won't go for the kill. If they get a Nyx Assassin pick off, that really hurts Navi. Because every time someone dies, Navi a lineup that's pretty much predicated on get your early BKVs and five men with the mech, take out our towers, get a map control advantage, and then win by out farming LGD. Mm -hmm. If they lose a hero here or there, that really delays the push. One or two minutes every time someone dies, but they won't find the pick off there. Maybe they'll have better luck next time. Also, forgot to mention that since Kuroki got the bolt in the last team fight, that actually mitigated a ton of damage output from LGD, and I think LGD would have won that team for handily if the Coco Rum wasn't applied on Na'Vi's side. So, very good sale on Kuroki, and as you expect, playing one of the best uh, Rubik possible in, in Europe. Yeah, even in the world. I mean, yeah. Kuroki is a fantastic Rubik. He does get a signature hero this game. So far, keeping Na'Vi alive through it. Now they'll, pe they'll pressure the Tier 1 mid again. Only two heroes here. Shall we? He has opportunities this game if he wants to go for an X Torrent to try and punish Dendi. Now he could definitely do it. X is there, stolen by Kuroki. The Torrent flies through, but they'll need more than these two. They just have one other hero tucked away. Yao, hook shot online. Is the BKB up for Silar? Not yet. The tier one will fall. It's denied by Yao. Navi marches forward. They want to try and take a pick off and then work on a tier two, but LGD won't be caught. Playing a bit too wise for that. Silar's BKB is coming soon. They did deny the tower mid and still the tier one top stands. If you're LGD, I think you're reasonably happy with how this game progresses. 15 minutes in, it is a 4k gold lead for Na'Vi, a 4k experience lead, but with so much team fight on LGD, one big fight, they could get it and it could really turn the game around. Yeah, to me, critically, Silar, even though he's keeping up in terms of CS, he's been he's he's actually falling a little bit behind in terms of level to Luna. You generally don't talk about levels too much for the carries, but it's so important for these two particular heroes because hitting level 11 will increase their burst damage output by quite a bit. It's very important for pushing as well as counter pushing. Here comes a big smoke gank from LGD and looks like they're maybe rotating to the mid lane. I don't think they actually killed Dendi unless everybody's there and everybody's there nuking him down at the same time. And of course, Jakira as well as Kuroki should be fairly easy kills, but they don't run into them. Now Puppy buys two smokes. It's going to be Navi's turn. Let's see if their smoke gank is more effective. If you're just joining us, it's game one of a best of five, the Alienware Cup Grand Finals underway and LGD currently slightly on the back foot, but not an overwhelming disadvantage for Navi. The BKBs are the next objective, just as Silar needs his, so too Havost and Dendi will need theirs. They're working towards them directly for both heroes. Dendi, I don't think he's got any of the components aside from the Ogre Club, so he still needs about 1,400 gold. Havost, a bit closer here, only about 800 to go. They now have level 11 on Havost, and that, that's a very important level for him, because Luna Zold at level 1 is often very underwhelming. Only yes. 4 beams. Once you hit level 2, it starts to hurt a lot more. The 7 makes a big difference. Yeah, you could start running into like solo or even double supports in the jungle and then just kill both of them. BKB number 1 is up on Silar, and uh, Luna will have it soon after. Dendi already working towards his recipe as well. So, imagine a world where both teams have their BKB. We, we talked about how important it is for both teams. Who wins these team fights? With one team on LGD side relying purely on magical burst damage in the early outset. On the other side, you have things like Wall, uh, Flame Breath, you know, Lunar's, Lunar's ultimate. Lunar's are, are, ultimate. <laughs> Lunar's ultimate. Are, are they less reliant on their magical damage? Do they have more physical? Uh, I actually think LGD have a bit more physical damage because Flat Cannon hits everyone guaranteed. Yes. Whereas Navi's. And the Tidebringer is like. Then the Tidebringer. Yeah, yeah. I, I would say LGD have a bit more physical damage, plus they've got familiars, but. I think the bigger question is who just gets the jump. If, say, you catch out the Dragonite before he BKBs, or maybe even Havos Luna, the more likely target, or if he gets the Gyro. Siler only has 1,000 HP. If he gets caught, he could easily die before popping it. If they lose Gyro, they definitely lose the team fight. I think the biggest thing in these fights is just who gets the better initiation, and Dendi is looking for the better one now. Invisor and up, ambling through the lane. Dragonite just out for a stroll on a good old country road. Not quite. He's out for blood. The way that LGD initiates, though, 
a lot of their spells could be dodged uh, by a BKB by mid activation. Like if Yao hooks in, sure you can dodge that. But the Torrent, you have some time. You see the bolt coming, you can activate the BKB. You see the Impale coming, you can activate the BKB. So I feel like LG spells are less reliant or slower. Uh, so BKB is going to be a lot more effective for Navi. At the same time, though, they're actually taking the aggression, looking to destroy this tier one tower. I'm not sure what the Navi is actually defending. Then he's actually walking away from that tower. They're going to give it up for free and. I'm not really sure they should be doing that. Oh, well, they want to go in on mid instead. Silar, a fresh shiny BKB. Here comes Surge Dendi. Stuns him up the hill. Can they keep him chased on the ice path? Is there? Dendi's still giving chase. He's forced out of Silar BKB. This has forced a rotation from Yao. The tier one bottom probably going to fall. Navi thinking they could get in range for an ice path, but the phase boots for the gyro making the difference, keeping him safe from Puppy. But his BKB is on cooldown. That's his 10 second charge. He also has to go back to base. And so Navi, well, I don't think they'll take the tier two mid. They could definitely pressure it and try and force LGD back. They take the tier one bottom. Slight advantage maybe for LGD just because they take a tower off of that, but Puppy's wrapping around. This twin headed dragon is out for trouble. A ton of long range uh, spells used to defend tower down to about half HP, but looks like everybody from LGD is here and they're looking to ready to take a team fight Silar. Or excuse me, Havos with this BKB. Dendi doesn't have it yet. Dendi is a person you want to go at. He's at 75% health. Fairly easy person to initiate because he's always on the front line. And if you burst him down, Navi have to retreat because they lose a lot of keep, tanking. Keep an eye for the surge into lift or the surge into dragon tail. That's how Navi want to start this fight. If anybody for LGD overextends, they could be trouble. For the time being, they're sitting back. It is worth mentioning that DDC has finally picked up a mechanism. We'll see if they find the right initiation. The tier one top under pressure, and Navi actually going to back Giant off. I imagine we'll see Siler go to farm this soon. But a little bit afraid right now. All five heroes grouped up mid. They'll clear out the wave. They might retreat as a unit. So far, Navi is just a little more confident to farm. Like, they'll go and farm one or two heroes by themselves, even against a Nyx Assassin. Whereas LGD, you see, they're afraid to go farm. They're worried about getting ganked. Yeah, I mean, the way that LG plays are a little bit more passive. You don't see those solo ganks that Nyx Assassin is doing. They're also using the map a lot better. I talked about the stacking from the support a little bit previously. Then he sees a Creepway bot, he TPs for it. Don't want the tower to take it all. If you look at com by comparison, that tier one tower up top for LGD China, that ate just like one and a half wave. And Silar is definitely a little bit sad inside because of it. And that's because he just didn't make that rotation. They felt like they need to stay together as a team. Whereas uh, Dendi and the rest of his team, a little bit more comfortable in terms of operating as by themselves instead of with the team. Yeah, sometimes as a Dota player, you can just overthink things. Give your opponents too much credit. Assume that they're, they're all-knowing or omnipotent. If you TP in, they'll kill you. Right. Navi just showed five mid. It was almost certainly safe for Siler to TP there. But if he didn't do it, he misses out on some golden experience. It's the little things adding up for Navi now. They lead by 5k gold, 6k experience. We're 21 minutes into this game one. It's not out of reach for LGD by any means, but if Navi gets the next set of items Radiant's after the BKBs, if they get a Mantis style on the Luna, even a Yasha, if Dendi completes his BKB and picks up anything from drums to an Assault Caress, works towards an Assault Caress, Assange, doesn't matter what the item is. The point is if they just get more items, LGD very reliant on that big team fight initiation burst damage. They don't have physical damage after that. Just a BKB on Silar, no damage items at all. Navi, if they withstand that initial onslaught, to me, with this item advantage, they should be able to take the prolonged team fight. Yeah, I, I don't think LG wins this team fight unless they have the most perfect chain stun on Dendi, or, uh, and I really don't even think so, even with the perfect chain stun, because they have mech and vacuum kind of to disrupt that. So Navi, sensing their advantage, is going to be pressuring at the tier 2 tile. The rocket's going to fly in here. That's going to stun Dendi. Vacuum, and while on top, and Silar in big trouble. He pops a BKB. DDC's dead right now. The boat comes in. A little bit too late. Kuroki, what did he steal? Nothing just yet. Surge, he lifted. He stole on something. It's going to be the rockets. But look at Navi with the double BKB. They win this team fight very handily. Let's see if they're going to try to push off of this. I think they can because Dendi and Luna is very healthy. They could back off as well, but the BKB is magical in this game. Fantastic vacuum by Funnick in that fight. Surging himself forward, kept pulling two supports back into the ice path, already laid down by Puppy. That is some great coordination. Funnick making a play. He wins that team fight pretty much by himself. Navi taking the tower off the back of that. They use their wall, but they get a tier two, the first tier two of the game. And LGD just feels like they're lacking damage at this point. Yeah. You mentioned it's magically, magical damage. Shao Wei does pick up a Shadow Blade. That's a start for him. But they'll need the next set of items, particularly on Silar. If Silar does get a Demon Edge, works towards an MKB, then Navi have to be a little bit more reluctant to just charge in like that. Dragonite is high armor, but the Luna could be very vulnerable to it. For the time being, though, there's just no damage output. So LGD, right. all they can do is sit back and farm. They have a Nyx Assassin and a Visage, a great roaming in the mid-game ganking support combo. Familiars and Vendetta, 
Nyx can find kills, but they haven't even gone for that. We saw one gank earlier. We saw uh, it through the jungle. Nyx just wandering around by himself about here. We saw the three hero smoke gank top. Nobby didn't get caught there. And now, those ganks having failed. LGD just falling behind. Yeah, I mean, you talked about Siler having physical damage. That predicates on him activating BKB before he goes down to a quarter health. That's what happened in the last fight. He didn't activate any Too BKB. slow. Well, because of the vacuum, because of Funnix's great play. Um, if Silo gets caught in the beginning of team fight, their team has no damage aside from a Tidebringer. And you don't win a fight off Tidebringer alone. So Silo has got to be having perfect positioning. And uh, that's somewhat hard. I mean, he's, he's got to go into semi melee range. There's a ton of range on Navi's side. He has to play perfect to carry him back in the game. He does have 2k go now. And I think they're in trouble. I think Navi's yeah, going to take this Yeah, it's starting to feel like it more and more. Havost with the Yasha online. Now the physical damage starts to add up. Once he gets a Manta style, assuming he wants to complete it, he will just be able to right-click on the tower. The Glaives bounce through as soon as the towers fall. And that's going to be trouble for these supports. So for the time being, we'll see Havost. Well, he'll back off. But I think Navi don't really have to force too many fights. The big thing... They just can't let LGD sneak a Roche in. As long as LGD doesn't sneak a Roche, I think Navi are in command of this game, and there's really no big pressure. LGD, I would give them the slight edge if the game goes really late, but they need a lot of items before I'd give them that edge. And right now, as we keep on mentioning, they don't have many items. Well, you talked about the importance of having to jump. If you look at Darkster, Blink Dagger. If you look at Kuroki, Blink Dagger. They're looking to have that jump. They had that jump in the last team fight with the Vacuum Wall. They won it very splendidly. They're looking to continue that trend. LG says, man, we need to get ourselves back in the game. They just have better items against us. We need to smoke. They do smoke up, but their smoke ganks, like you've also pointed out, doesn't do much. Can you actually go in and kill anyone mid? They're just parked here. They back off. They want Navi to walk up the hill as one or two. Navi clustered I mean, together as a unit. This smoke is so apparent. Like, top creep equilibrium right at the tier 1 tower. Nobody defends it. They know they're smoked up. Yeah, Navi says, we know you're smoked, we don't care. We're just going to march in mid. Shall we? We'll start with an X. That is not a good initiation. If they go for this, it could be a disaster. Havos comes in. He'll pop his Eclipse with a BKB now. Only gets DD, but that's one that hits the deck first. Now it'll be a 5v4. And then they go on Silo. They lift him up. They back him back. He narrowly pops his BKB. But this is a gyro with no physical damage output. Charging in the Rocket Barrage, doing, making the difference. Havos might fall here. He's trying to live through it. It's too much burst. He'll go down. Two for one is our clockwork for Yao. Did fall. LGD call it a three for one they lost their luna but navi just had the better burst damage after the bkbs were off shout eight's gonna fall dendy standing strong they've taken four it's a team wipe for navi and they could look to roche now they could even look to pressure the tier two bottom lgd doesn't matter if they have a BKB on the gyro. They have no follow-up. Puppy on the bottom here is going to get it by Vendetta. Impel not going to get dodged here. Puppy goes down. That was one of the best team fight that LG could hope for. And that sounds ironic to say because they lost DD right in the beginning. But they only lost DD to double BKB activations without having any of their other spells on cooldown. And an Eclipse. Yeah, and then Eclipse. But they still lost that team fight. That shows you how strong, how, how much stronger Navi actually is. The two Blink Daggers from Kuroki as well as the Blink Vacuum really, again, won the team fight for them. Initiation is the key, and Dyer's the ability to chase after winning a team attack. fight, even better. That was just a bad engagement as well. Like, th when Xiao Wei went in there and, and throws out the X Tort, you could tell LGD oh, immediately won. were saying, oh, we shouldn't be fighting this. They have caught Dendi, though. He's overextended. He tries to TP out. He didn't pop his BKB first, unfortunately. Now the battery assault's going to cancel that TP. Oh, he could have BKB'd and escaped there, but he ends up going down. Yeah, that's a... Slight misplay by Dendi. That's uh, something that you generally don't expect from Dendi, uh, making a misplay like that, but... It's okay. They're winning hard enough that one kill wouldn't change too much. Kuroki's got himself so assumption. That's nasty. This is pretty nasty. He's squishy, though. Kuroki is... I mean, I've talked about how the gyro doesn't do much damage. Still, one Tidebrainer and a few flat cannon shots yeah, will yeah. kill him. So, positioning remains of utmost importance for Kuroki. Actually, if you look at Kuroki's skill build, he's actually skipping Telekinesis Lift in, uh, for, for no fuel, which is actually really smart. Yeah, Again, I like this LGD, a lot. Again, LGD, all magical. Reduce the magical damage, and you're going to be tanker as a team. So, very, very good adjustment to the skill build. Uh, we've been talking a lot about how they lack damage. They've finally gotten an Eagle Horn on Silar. If he gets a Butterfly, he starts to pack a bit of a punch here. I'd yeah. be a little worried if I'm Navi to play too defensively. They have this item advantage, this gold advantage. It's not overwhelming. And overall, the pace of this game has been more of an LGD pace. Still tier 3 outer towers standing for them. No Roche attempted by other team. Even though Navi's ahead 10 to 6, 7,500 gold. Even though they're up 10k experience. 
If Silar starts to get that next level of items, I'd be worried for Navi. It is very hard to go high ground into Boat, Hook, Nyx Assassin, Visage Familiars, as well as the Calldown Flat Cannon. Navi, they'll need more than this to break the base. To me, I don't think it is about Silar's item. It's about, to me, Navi's initiation. It doesn't matter if you have some MKB Butterfly and even a Manta on top. If you get Blink lifted, if you get Blink Vacuum, every single spell is going to be dropped on you, and there's not enough Force Stabs or Hype or Mech on LG to actually help Silar to get out of trouble. There's not a disruption. There's no Astro Imprisonment. So that, if Silar... Normally, when someone, when one of us says, if, maybe, if, then my response is, well, that's a lot of ifs, Lumi. But in this case, there's a lot of ways to get that yeah. initiation. It is there's very, Surge very in the safe. Dragon Tail, there's going to be a Shadow Blade soon on Denny, there's Double Blink Dagger on Funnick and Kuroki, Ice Pass got long range, even Lucent Beam can be initiation if you've got supports close in tow. So normally I would say, that's too many ifs, but in this case, they have so many ways to accomplish the ifs that it's actually quite likely he'll get jumped. So what Siner ne needs in my opinion is a ton of items, like you talked about Butterfly, MKB, and also buyback, and then they need to fight under the tower, and then die, buy back and come back, and now that's a lot of if, and... I'm not sure what it'll get there with the gold and having buyback and wh whether Navi's going to wait that long. Navi's playing very passively. I feel they could be pressing the issue a bit more. Uh, it, you don't necessarily have to commit to the tower. They will smoke up now, but you just look for those blink initiations or just siege away. Have the Dragonite in the front lines. Dendi isn't going to die unless LGD throws everything at him and he's caught under tower in the cogs. Now Havost with a fresh uh -oh. shiny manta will come up the hill DDC. and DDC is going to get caught out. One auto attack. The familiars come through. In from the side is Kuroki. He's blinked up the hill. Now he'll lift him. No way DDC gets out of here. He'll end up going down after popping the mech. A few more nukes. That'll be the end of him. That's Roche, right? I know. Well, Silar pressuring the top lane. He will be forced to BKB. He's going back into the tower. Dendi shadow bladed. Did Silar think the TP was canceled? I'm not sure if he realized that he was still here. He wants the tower. Oh, this could be bad. No, Silar will get away in the end. It, I guess he had support coming, but I, I don't know if he. I think he thought Dendi canceled the TP or something. I think so as well. I think Dendi uses shadow blade and shift Q up, and Dendi goes into range for him. Immediate stun. Torn's gonna fly through as well, but they can't throw out the bolt because BKB is available. Funny coming right in. Vacuum, Ice Pass, well, it's going to get used as well, that miss. But meanwhile, Kuroki comes on the back line. He's actually tackling two core heroes by himself because he knows Funix on the back line. They get one more kill. Surge forward here. Torn's going to hit as well. These Torrents are magical, but they're not doing too much. Meanwhile, on the other side here, Didi's in big trouble. Didi's also going to get picked off. These scrappy team fights favor the team with more mobility. BKB, TP out for Silar. And the double blink. I hate to repeat it so many times, but Navi's mobility is just absolutely glorious in these team fights. That didn't have to happen. Silar could have just ran away top. He yep. got Dendi, great play, Shadow Blade, and then TPing in, I think is what happened, like you said. And he, Silar didn't know there was a Shadow Blade, just caught off guard and ends up getting his team into a lot of trouble. Silar does live through the team fight, but the rest of his team, not so lucky. They ended up losing three, the Visage, the Nyx, as well as the Clockwork. The Kunkka for Shao 8 prevails. They do keep their damage heroes alive, and Shao 8 up to 2,700 gold. They'll have some decent damage, but now the question is, can they just stand around to use it? Because Dendi, Shadowblade up, level 16, only 30 minutes in. Considering how active he's been, how much he's been 5-manning, that's a fast level 16. And now Havos, level 3 Eclipse, that's 10 beams. That's a lot of physical damage, or nuke damage, as well as physical, with a Manta style online. 2300 gold, he'll be sieging the tower top, and Navi right behind him. Five heroes parked up. The dire oh, tier Yao. 2 top could be in trouble. Yao, being Yao getting caught out here. Dendi looking to go on him. He's got a BKB. He's just going to try and right click him down. Yao dropping fast. The clockwork hook. Now the cogs. It won't matter. Havost on the backside charges into three. Two get backed up on the hill by Funic. What a back. They're trapped. They can't participate in this fight. And now in comes Kuroki. He's stolen Torrent. They're all trapped in a hill. It's the cliff of death for LGD. Two heroes fall. Sadler trying to duke it out with Dendi. Dendi says, hell no. I'm the Dendi Knight, man. You can't beat me. DDC still on this horrible cliff. He's trapped. He'll be going down eventually. The Lucent Beam, the Wall, the Torrent. That's some hate for DDC. He's got another soul assumption. It doesn't matter. There's no way out for DDC. No way, no how. Funnick, what a friggin' player. Sensational vacuum there. I think when people say that Funnick not as good as Light of Heaven, I think that's an unfair comparison. I think Funnick is really, really good player. All I said was not as accomplished, but... He's, he's making those accomplishments now. He's writing some history for Funic himself. Funic to me is kind of the silent, unsung hero for Na'Vi. He's always this good on Darkseer, and he just showed it in that particular team fight. Very, very flashy play. Still just impeccable on that Blink Dagger control, and yeah, another team fight victory. Guess what he buys? BKB, because that's the 
that's the item to go for this game against LGD. Yao can't get caught like that. He's their counter initiate. He's the one who either needs to start the fight on his own terms or be back there to, to end the fight and get his team out of dodge. When he gets caught, Kunkka isn't a good hero to help your team disengage. Sure, you can pop the boat and run, but you want that boat to be flying forward to stun the enemy team while you either run in or retreat. If Yao gets caught, then LGD, just no way for them to run. Not against all these BKBs. The hook is their saving grace, so when he dies like that, that costs them the fight. He needs to have better position farther behind the team. They need better wards if he's going to stand up there. Otherwise, there's just no way they can take these fights. Yeah, I think LGD, they're pretty much lost, and their only way to really recover in this game is to not take any fight and just either sneak a Roche or keep on farming. You talked about Silar's Eagle Song. He's got that like 15 minutes ago, 10 minutes ago. He hasn't got anything it's else. Been a, yeah, it's been a long time for him, and... Even once he gets a butterfly now, he still needs another item. Because right. Havost gonna... is just purchased something big. He's got an Eagle Song of his own, and he's got a Manta already. Dendi, Piper Stone up, working towards an AC. By the time he gets his butterfly, Navi will have two big damage items on their cores. And at that point, I don't think he can take them. Right, and Xiao Aids doesn't have too much item himself. He's got no buyback. He's actually gone for a... Uh, he's going for a very late BKB. Against the Dragonite, that slow still goes through BKB. Yep. I guess he, he does somewhat need it to make sure he gets off the boat, but they also need damage. So he's just, he needs two items, he can only buy one, and I don't think this is going to be enough. To be fair, it gives you a little bit of damage, but Surgeon. there's nowhere near enough. Kuroki looking Blink. for a kill, he blinks forward, he's going to lift back the gyro. The torrent that he stole comes through. Now Funic, back on two, there's your ice pad, the only catch is DDC, the BKB comes through. A decent hook, decent to say the least. Yao's caught two, Siler going to work, Havos dropping fast, even through his BKB. He's not dead yet though, Dendi's at full HP, and in he comes. DDC the visage driven back, the dragon stronger than the bird, that's for damn sure. Now a torrent, clips Funic, but the last cleave will bring down Havos. Off with the Luna's head. Cat hater, Xiao Eight will get the kill. Meanwhile, Kurogi was diving the base next to Tier 4 Towers. TP's out barely surviving that thanks to things like Force Staff and Ghost Scepter. That is, that is just filthy initiation. Yeah. Surge in the back. Back in the mid lane, though, they're not done. They find Xiao Eight down to about half HP. Double Iron Shell vacuum back. We're here. Invisibility do not save you from those. What is he purple. doing outside of the base? He thought he was safe. They just lost a team fight. Navi should have been back farming the top and bot lane, but Navi says, hey guys. I don't know. Free you kill mid. That's a little questionable to me. Yeah, I mean, this game was all over questionable at the end of the draft for, for LG China. They're so weak to BKB. We, we've seen it at the beginning of the game, and Navi, they seen it well. They went BKB first, and the rest of the history, these team fights are just so one sided. It's not even fair now. But yeah, that initiation by Kuroki, he surged from like, all right, I think he was like right here. They surged him about here. Then he blinks forward here. Oh, that's maybe a little bit farther than he blinked. I think he ran up more. And then he X, or rather he, he lifts, he torrents, then he jumps out after that with the four staff. He initiated from like 4,000 range or something absolutely insane. And but his team was able to keep up, right? Normally when yeah. one hero goes crazy mode like that, his team can't keep up. But when you have a blink dark there with Surge on his own... This is where they need wards. They need more wards on the map. They have no vision right now. It's because Dendi has a gem. Did he actually steal this from LGD? No, it was Puppy's gem. So without vision... You, that's the only way to deal with that kind of initiation range. You I have mean, to know when they're coming. If you look at the net worth of LGD, they're on food stamps. They, they got nothing. Wards are not uh, you know, free, you know? Well, they have a belt of giant strength on DDC. I'd rather see this gold being put towards something like a gem, but uh, you're right. They're poor. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure whether wards are on cool now. I'll quickly check. It looks like they have one in stock. Uh, but yeah, they do have two wards down now, but <laughs> these wards would have been a lot better. Uh, previously before that team fight happened. If you're Navi right now, I think you just kind of cool your jets, get your next few items. If you want to go for a smoke gank, that's fine, but you don't just barrel down mid, because you're about to get a lot stronger. The butterfly and Havos, the AC is complete on Dendi already. Well, they'll try and fight just with the AC. That I is a huge upgrade. Double damage. And now, oh god. Uh, double damage, double Dendi. <laughs> this is double trouble. He's got his frost dragon. This is going to be a lot of bursts. He smoked, he walks up the river. He's going to get up the river safely and watch for the dragon form shadow blade initiation. The walk right past the sentry, Havos devoiding that. Uh, Dewarding that. He's not. trying to actually use his double damage room by not activating that BKB because it will dispel it. So he's trying to keep his distance. In comes the Vost. He'll throw out a loose and to start. Now Kuroki leaps forward. The call down that was stolen. Slowing Silar. Hook from Yao. Not going to latch. Now they have to back. And they that's a BKB. That's fine. That's pretty much Roche. Yeah. Navi, no hook, no BKB. No way LGD can fight. And they'll go right for Roche. Very smart play from Navi. Again, it doesn't matter what item Gyrocopter has. It just matters or whether they get the jump. They do get the jump. Force out BKB. Not exactly anything happening, but they won the quote-unquote team fight. 
We do see Pink coming on the right side here. That's Xiao Wei. War scouts him out. Blink vacuum backwards. Blink live. They have all the blinks in the world. Silo not going to get clipped by that ass pop. Horn's going to hit everybody here. And Yao will back off. Force that four on Volts. They want to kill him, but he's actually killing everybody else. Yao goes down. And they are just keep on chasing. They see DDC. Impel's going to hit everybody. Caught out on top of him as well. And there's the bolt, but the BKB from Dendi. He wants a man fight. He sees three. Everybody's melting to that frost. Epicenter, Borf of Damage from Dendi. Dendi firing through the multiple BKB. Blink from Kuroki. He face both with a double kill. And that's yet another team wide shout A. GG. Navi are going to take game one in a pretty impressive fashion. Massive item advantage. Just better execution in the team fights from them. I gotta say, Lumi, I don't know what LGD China was doing outside of their base there. No BKB on Silar, no Hulk. You can't fight. You're way too far behind for that. A few questionable moments in the late game. Xiao Wei getting picked off mid, even before that. Yao getting picked off at that fight near the Dire Tier 2 while it still stood. That late game positioning, normally LGD, that's where they're strongest, but not this game. It was Na'Vi with the massive range initiation. Great range, Shut basically. Blink Daggers, Four Staff, Surge, Shadow Blade. And a lot of them, they had what, triple blink that game, double blink and a force and yeah. surge. It was too much initiation range. LGD, it's hard to get caught there, just not disciplined enough, and Navi outplayed them. I feel like Navi is taking a gun to a team, uh, to, a, to a fist a fight. A knife fight. Yeah, a knife fair. fight, and uh, LG's got a short dagger, and that's not a... They at least need some brass knuckles, you know? Uh, they, they don't got that either. They're, again, they're on food stamps, so... Game one goes to LG, no, it goes to can, Navi. Can you punch people with food stamps? I don't no, think they hurt. No, you can slap them, but they're... <laughs> it's like a big wad of food stamps. That's what it felt like they were fighting with yeah, that yeah, game. Yeah, pretty much. But, well, let's see what James and Bruno think, but uh, it's, it's LG China kind of looking bad. Yeah, um, I'll talk about LGD China in just a moment, but Navi, a couple of things I, I think I want to say like was mm -hmm. good. First of all, stacking the jungle for your dark set right. actually did matter. Mm -hmm. In a way, the only really big mistake they made was that kind of fight top where there was a good um, hook in um, by Yao onto mm -hmm. Dendi, even though Dendi actually dodged the torrent. Right. Um, they actually, just after the tower went down, they had the mech. That was a very fast mech. Darkseid mm -hmm. was very happy with a couple of stacks he got in the jungle. Worked out really nicely for him. Puppy also got great levels once he came and uh, did a nice ice path onto the tier 1 tower top. Pulled two creek waves down got really good farm and from that moment you can actually see that they're about a thousand XP, a thousand gold yeah. ahead and their supports were slightly higher level. So the start was actually weird but nice. Um, but I do want to say that um, Kurokai just yeah. played amazing. I, I love a Rubik that is, isn't scared to actually find farm mm -hmm. because you scale really well in terms of being able to position versus any team. And he farmed up a Blink Dagger as his first major item, uh, went into a Ghost Scepter and then Force a Force Staff. Yeah. With Arcanes on top. Yeah, with Arcanes. And so he was just he was just constantly looking to find farm around the two, you know, carries, mm -hmm. um, uh, Dendi and also Havost. And he was able to get it um, yes. with Puppy and Jungle. And it, was, it really worked out for him. Um, and then Funic, with the good early start with the mech, was able to get into his Blink Dagger as well. So it was a really good distribution of gold across the board for Na'Vi that really allowed the whole team to be strong, um, not just their carries. Mm -hmm. The things that I didn't like about LGD, um, Clockwork, is it, a, is it a dying breed of hero in competitive gaming? Mm -hmm. A lot of the times we say, you know, you think that initiation is great, being able to get in on your terms, but when you're up against certain lineups, you can't Melt. initiate with a clockwork unless you've got something significant other than just being there. Yeah. A BKB, a four staff. Because he had such a good time on his lane to start with just because of the lack of supports that were there mm -hmm. um, from the Na'Vi side. But he wasn't able to find the farm kind of like Kuroki, uh, Kurokai was yeah. on his Rubik. So he was, he was so starved and it was like, and I just, if you just get like a four staff, it's not great, but obviously because you're going <laughs> to probably get a, a DK stun. But being able to put up a cogs and trap something and four staff back out to your teammates mm -hmm. and rejoin the fight where the mech is, etc., and then allow the cooldown to have its effect, that's a good enough item. BKB would have been great. He went for it, couldn't get for it. So I, I'm just not sure um, how clock works working I, out these days. I disagree um, with the clock in here. I think the idea was for clock to actually probably not survive it was okay with the clock not surviving this fight but if you think they have so many 
hard to line kind of spells where you have, for example, the torrent into vault, you have the call down from the gyrocopter, and you have also the visage um, familiars, which you can locate. And as soon as, if you get a good hook into two or three people, which granted it's hard, but I mean, at this level, these guys can pull it off if they know that they're clamping together. You could potentially do a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they managed to do execute it as well. And it came down to sometimes poor execution from LGD China, but I want to point out, uh, like, we talked about the good about Navi. I think at some point, especially in the early game, they, first of all, took it very slow when they could have executed better and gotten better advantages. I, I felt they were just waiting for their BKBs. Yeah, and sometimes they stayed a little bit longer than they should have, and favor favorable trades, like when they got three clean kills, they got just one death out of nowhere because well, they overstayed the welcome, which is not bad because they ended up 27-9. Um, I, I don't think I can fault Na'Vi's early game that much, though, because you saw what Dendi was doing, right? He's yeah. like, I am a, a DK, I can hit your tower every once in a while, and if you want to initiate on me, yeah. these guys are going to yeah. deal with you. And Kurakai was, he, he stole boat, mm -hmm. um, he stole cooldown, he was really pretty much on point. And Funic was so healthy in terms of just being able to, like, you know, like, good amount of items. He was, even without the, the blink dagger, he was able yeah. to turn a fight even if there was. I really like the BKB and Darkseer. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much allowed him to. I actually whatever. thought that Rubik was going to go for one as well, Kurakai. <laughs> um, Could have. In, instead of a four staff. Um, but yeah, like their, their tactic, yeah, maybe they did stay around a, a little bit longer, mm -hmm. but it seemed like they just wanted to take what they could and use Dendi as a very aggressive standing mm -hmm. um, DK. And, and it kind of worked because a lot of the times the enemy team, instead of farming their other heroes, were all waiting, going, when's the right time to go in? Now, you know, they were like, when's the right time to go in with our clockwork? Mm -hmm. And it didn't, there wasn't always a, a great time. Yeah. But then, th well, that, that's pretty much the story of the game. Uh, Navi, if they keep doing the same, they will, I, I think, LGD China is not prepared to play against this Navi the way they are now. Probably they will experiment with something different. Uh, I think LGD China proved that uh, the Kanka pick, maybe they could have gone for something that could punish the Dragon Knight more, right? I mean, in theory, the Tidebringer deals damage. It goes through your armor because you hit the creep, and the damage that propagates is the damage that you do to the creep. Um, but it didn't feel enough. Yeah, Kunkka with even going early um, points into kind of X marks the spot, I felt was not necessarily needed when mm -hmm. you have a clockwork. It's like when it's, when it's scrappy and you want to really get advantage and lead the way, yeah. it can be really good. But they did lose a little bit of damage on uh, not having Torrent. And, um, but overall, yeah, I think Na'Vi just uh, led from the get-go, even with some weird openings mm -hmm. with showing everybody mid walking away and then smoking. then smoking then trying it unfortunately they didn't make anything happen yeah and then actually stacking the jungle and just leaving um havost on the bottom lane versus a clockwork mm -hmm. almost seemed to me like both teams were playing with slight nerves in that game a little bit yeah uh, especially lgd just very reluctant to take fights not be those kind of halting early moments but they yeah. then they said okay guys let's go yeah havost says we're going in it's gonna work I mean, this is where you. Did. This is where you wish DDC and DD were like net and support that could do something in the early game. You talked about Nyx Assassin Visage never making a single gank throughout the game, and Navi is not like the team that they always clump up and farm as five. In fact, they could be greedy because they know the enemy team won't get. That's true. Part of it was just the good movement from Navi. They yeah. weren't getting caught out. They were playing together. They had Sentry Ward. They were almost always prepared for the Nyx. They got a fairly early gem, so. I think they did all the right things to kind of deal with that aggression, but at the same time, you pick a Nyx, you pick a Visage, you don't contest the enemy trial lane, you got to get some pressure on the enemy team. Yep. And there was no pressure at all. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. They, they were very um, irrelevant, unfortunately, the Visage yeah. and yeah. the Nyx Assassin. Apart from the Visage, when he got pulled up onto the little uh, ledge, yeah. Where he, he was, was doing some assumptions to everyone. So so I, I, think, <laughs> I think he was super happy about that. <laughs> he was like, yeah, I'm really tanky and I'm getting loads of solar assumption charges, but unfortunately he didn't get a kill. And actually, <laughs> Na'Vi ended up uh, surviving. But yeah, funny pulling out some moves there. Yeah. Um, so we'll see what happens next game. I'm mm -hmm. expecting LGD just uh, very capable players of uh, besting Na'Vi. A different lineup. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't get the Darks here. It's right. one of their key heroes that they like to play. Great for team fights. If mm -hmm. they had something like that over a clockwork, I would have... I felt that would have gone a lot I more agree even. with you, yeah. Um, but Na'Vi actually first picked it. 
Mm -hmm. And then, um, and I just want to see more uh, uh, Kurokai on um, on Rubik. Uh, on Rubik. Oh, yeah. you'll keep seeing him. Don't worry. Good. It's his hero. Um, before we go to a break, this is uh, DPM Licious time for. Um, it seems that because What's we are DPM Licious time. Well, uh, this uh, apparently because Navi is playing and she took a page out of Zero Gravity's book. She's making an announcement. Zero Gravity has a book. Yeah. What's it called? It's called. Uh, ruminations of zero gravity, um, but yeah, he's, she's making an announcement of an announcement, and she's making me make an announcement of an announcement of the announcement. But whatever, for all of you guys, apparently, um, I'm reading here. Yeah, Alien World Cup Facebook, which is uh, Facebook.com/slash Alien World Cup, um, will be doing. Yeah, I'm writing. Uh, we'll be doing a giveaway of a hundred compendiums uh, tomorrow. Compendiums. So compendiums. Yeah. The well, they will start tomorrow, and they will be. I, I'm being corrected at the moment. So if you go there, I, like you can't do anything now because there's nothing in the Facebook. I you can like the page. Yeah, you can like the page, which is cool. And but then it will tell you when the competition's up, and you'll be ready. Yeah, it will come up on your but feed. Why? I, I don't know. It, it starts tomorrow. Do not expect competition today because they, they start tomorrow. And that's the announcement. All right, guys, get out your notebook. Get out your pen. Yeah, there's and about 45 directions. Let's exactly. go. Exactly. No, no, no. It's, it's just that like them, or I don't know. Just wait for them. They, they will have the directions. And also because DPM leashes is. Also such a nice girl. She's also doing her own giveaway of a hundred compendium because she wants to compete with Alienware. Did you just buy a hundred compendiums yourself? Yeah. You did. You're a nutter. How much did that cost you? Well, a thousand dollars. You just spent a thousand dollars. What do you do for a living? This whole Alienware cup is just a front <laughs> for some sort of drug operation you're running. Have you seen me? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you get this Hawaiian shirt? <laughs> anyway, um... Go like the Alienware Cup page. It's awesome. And uh, make, sure you, make well. sure you give some props, yeah, to um, MasterCard and Alienware. And hopefully, if you, enough of you guys like this, and this is going to be the last day of the Alienware Cup, so hopefully if there's enough good feedback, you guys enjoyed the tournament, you left some feedback on the Alienware Cup page, you gave it a like, um, hopefully that will encourage them to do a Season 2. Because, you know, everyone's short. We're all looking forward to mm -hmm. the international, but then we have a whole other year. I wonder if we can get a few more Alienware Cups in and uh, with some, you know, um, more Western teams yeah. going over to compete. Cause, Absolutely. Um, that would be interesting if that can happen for a, a season two I mean, and whatnot. Imagine if Navi makes it, right? We have first Alliance, then Navi. And then what next? And then what Cube next? Have who who comes there? I, <laughs> I was going for a question, but yeah, that, that, I think that answers the question. The next Anybody could. Anybody could. That was the. Process. It's kind of like Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah. We just <laughs> donate to get to the beat up on some some Chinese. China. Uh, see, I already beat. I did it before Alliance. I was beating up on Lumi last year. So, yeah, but they're not. They're nothing special. Mm -hmm. We've done better. It's okay, buddy. I'm being outnumbered here. I can't even say anything without feeling physically yeah. afraid. That's and why we have three white people on the panel. Yeah. And it, and also, I'm I'm not white. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. You look sort of white to me. Yeah. Y'all look white. Anyway, uh, I was going to say, make sure you stick around because yeah. uh, Lumi later will rap. If you don't know, there was a uh, discussion on stream uh, a few days ago where uh, Bruno was like, you now get more towers as a whole team. I was bullied uh, more into gold. taking that bet. Yeah. You now get more gold as a whole team um, when you get towers. So, and Lumi was like, no, you don't. And then they, they, they f tried figuring it out. Bruno pulled in Ice Frog, who pasted <laughs> him the stuff, and it turned out Lumi lost. If Bruno lost the bet, or was wrong, not the mm -hmm. bet, but if they bet, even, you know, if, if, uh, if whoever wins or loses or whatever. If you lost it, you were going to have to do... Oh, unbuttoned shirt and Lumi in my chest. Yeah, right, Lumi in his chest with unbuttoned shirt. And if Lumi lost, he was going to have to do a rap. Um, <laughs> we've, we put out a poll on what the rap people mm -hmm. wanted. I wanted Wild Wild West by Will Smith. Uh, I can't remember what LDs was. No, Lumi, wa Lumi wanted um, Fresh Friends of Fresh 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 by Will Smith. And then uh, Bruno came up with uh, Lose Yourself. Lose Yourself by Eminem. By Eminem. And uh, Lumi later in the show, we're not sure when, uh, we're going to get a karaoke version and then we're going to have him rap. It's going to be, a, I, f I fear it's going to either be amazing or horrible and or either both. way could probably end his rapping career before it even started. <laughs> Or if you kick it off. But that will be coming up later. And I won't um, bang on about it too much because I don't want to build the over the importance. But it, it is the highlight of the show. 
Mm-hmm. We'll do I it mean, before. Uh, Navi and LGD are kind of. They're the, the background. Second we'll, 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 we'll do it after game three, no matter what. If Navi wins three games, we do it after it's over. If LGD China gets one game, we do it in between the breaks between yeah. game three and game four. So get ready, Lumi. Yeah, I'm Good looking count. forward to that. Um, so, yeah, I think LGD, as I mentioned, going into game two, change lineup. They can be a completely different team because they're, uh, you know. Change this, lineup this as in bring Ferrari, <laughs> bring Joe. Hero pool, but like, yeah, as you mentioned, Visage didn't do much, can't rotate, Nyx didn't get any ganks. The clockwork wasn't very relevant in the mm-hmm. team fights, apart from just one when they didn't have mech, which they didn't need it. They didn't really need to take that fight, which you mentioned they did stay around yeah. a little bit longer um, than they needed to in some fights. So we'll see what the hero pool brings us next game. Uh, otherwise, though, it looks like we're going to be ready pretty soon. I'm going to look over to my lovely producer. Hello, Did producer. Hey, wake up, producer. What would you like the to producer. Do you want to put yourself on webcam? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> this webcam like is not like a tool for James to bully. It's yeah. like a <laughs> sleep <laughs> cam. Right. Can we roll that one clip once again? Yeah, I don't well think a lot of people have seen it. Yeah, we'll take a quick break here. We can run yeah. the, the intro that people missed, and then we'll come back and we'll do game two. Yeah, looks good. Sound good? I, I thought you guys wanted to do adverts to make money. I mean, how many viewers have you got right now? 52k. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll run ads over it. <laughs> LD's all about <laughs> running ads. Don't, don't worry, If man. you subscribe, you won't get ads. Yeah, that's true. But LD true. will get more money. Uh, so the team's are ready. We should be getting underway very soon. Game two is coming up. It's going to be Navi versus LGD. Navi leading the best of five, one to zero. This is the Alienware Cup brought to you by Alienware, MasterCard, and DPM Interactive. Stay with us.